for Truth News, your daily news smoothie with an extra plop, plop of the good news protein powder. And with me at the desk is my trusty co-pilot, Rossi Ross Matthews. That is one healthy smoothie, everybody. Hi. Hi, guys. And a big day around here. Too. Well, speaking of two scoops of high-powered protein, joining us on Zoom are two men who need no introduction. Legends, comedians, actors, and writers who are now co-hosting an incredible new podcast that takes you behind the scenes at the institution that is Saturday Night Live. Please welcome the ones and onlys, Dana Carvey and David Spade. Wow. Hey. Yeah. Hello. Hello. David. This is insane. Great hair day. Right? Hey. <laughs> <laughs> How are you? I'm so good. Um, I just, there's so many things that you've put out into the world that are so wonderful. And you have this new podcast that really does give you a fly on the wall from, you know, legends from the almighty institution. I was lucky enough I got to come to your show last week. Thank you so much for having me. Yes, you did. You were yes, wonderful. Yes, you were awesome. One of our favorite guests. Yeah. Yeah. I no love. joke. Can I? you both a quick question like I'm just gonna pick two two things that you did you um, out of my the top of my head like David when yeah. you came up with Hollywood Minute how did that one come about because I I I think about it all the time it's one of my favorite things I've ever seen I miss it I love it I think the quick answer uh, is that when, in those days there was just People magazine and everyone was sort of just fawning over celebrities and I was a guy on SNL that no one knew from Arizona younger and I would just, mm -hmm. I would read the People magazine at the desk with like Bob Odenkirk and other writers and just go make fun of people. Oh, look at Michael Bolton. Uh, you got long hair in the back, but we all know what's happening on top. <laughs> you, know, you know what I mean? Yeah. I know you sold 8 million albums, but I don't know anybody that has one. And then I would just talk out loud and then, and then, and then he goes, why don't you turn that into something for the news where you can just deliver them rat-a-tat-tat. -tat. Yeah. And then we did that. And then Lauren said, why don't you do it again next week? And I was like, because, you know, Lauren's like the dad that you oh. want to like you. And I wasn't yeah. doing unbelievably well in the show. So it, it turned into a, a, a running thing. And it helped me stay on for a couple more years. Now, like Dana Church Lady, for yes. one. Where yes. was the impetus? I mean, come on. I mean. Where was uh, the impetus idea light bulb for that? I'm not totally sure where it came from. I started, I was playing uh, where I met my wife in the Haight-Ashbury uh, converted laundromat, a little comedy club. And I would riff a lot. And I looked 12 at the time. I looked younger than David Spade. And <laughs> when I came when I came on stage, I could see the audience kind of go, whoa. And so I started doing that condescending teacher attitude of, wow, wow, wow. Apparently, they let little children into the audience theater or whatever. <laughs> yeah. oh. So that, that's where it came from. And then the condescending, it became church ladies, the ones who ran the church. And it just became... Um, well, this attitude is fun to do. So it'd be like, oh, the Drew Barrymore show. We have a little set, don't we? And we're in little <laughs> microphones we talk into, but we don't care too much about Jesus. So that's, um, <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I don't, I didn't mean to offend. That's just the church lady. No, no, no. That's church lady. She's weird. That's the lady. She's kind of mean. I'm nice. Yeah. 